This Civic Media Podcast is sponsored by UW Organ and Tissue Donation. Organ donations are desperately needed, and now is the right time to become an organ donor. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. Go to HeroicDeed.com. This is your WGBW Daily News Roundup for the Talk of Green Bay, 97.9 FM and 1590 AM. For 97.9 WGBW News, I'm Lisa Hale. Winter weather's knocking on our back doorstep, and conveniently, it's also timed out with Winter Weather Awareness Week. Meteorologist Brittany Merlot explains. Winter storms are a-brewing. Do you have the supplies ready at home and for on the road? It's the basics of dressing warmly, but having those extra layers in your vehicle, too, they're ready to go in case you were to get stranded. Um, it's being smart and reminding um, young people. That's Matt Friedline with the National Weather Service. Get a winter weather emergency kit ready and in your car today. At home, stock up on additional supplies and have a plan for what to do if you lose power. Do you have extra batteries or other alternative power sources, like a power bank or a generator? Making sure you know what to do if the furnace uh, doesn't work. Being able to dress warmly in blankets if it happens at night before you can have it serviced the next day, for instance, too. And remember to check on the elderly, making sure that they're set for winter's wrath as well. I'm meteorologist Brittany Merlot. Judicial regulators have filed a 10-count complaint against a former Wisconsin Supreme Court justice who led an investigation into the 2020 presidential election results. The State Office of Lawyer Regulation filed the complaint against former Justice Michael Gableman Tuesday. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss hired Gableman in June of 2021 to investigate the administration of the 2020 election. Voss then fired him in August of 2022 after the probe turned up nothing. The complaint accuses Gableman of violating a number of state Supreme Court rules during the investigation, including making false statements, disrupting a court hearing, questioning a judge's integrity, making derogatory remarks about opposing attorneys, and violating open records law. Democrats in the Dairy State have a new executive director, and that might not be the end of the changes. Stuart J. Waddles reports. Sarah Abel has been named the new executive director of the Democratic Party of Wisconsin. She previously served as the deputy executive director. The shakeup might not end there. There's a report in the Wisconsin State Journal that current state party chair Ben Wickler is considering a bid to lead the Democratic National Committee. Wickler's held the Wisconsin position since 2019. Yesterday, the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction released the School and District Accountability Report Cards for the 2023-24 school year. Wisconsin statute requires the DPI to publish the school and district report cards every year. Report cards include data for multiple school years across four priority areas, achievement, growth, target group outcomes, and on track to graduation. Scores are out of 100 points. Green Bay Area Public Schools scored a 60.1 and meets expectations. Appleton Area Schools scored a 65.6 and also meets expectations. See our story at wgbw.fm for other school district scores from our area. 43-year-old Bobby Matyeka of San Antonio, Texas was sentenced to 20 years in federal prison Tuesday for soliciting sexually explicit images of an eight-year-old child from an Appleton woman. Court records show the exchanges between the two centered on the rape and sexual abuse of the woman's children. The crimes took place from December of 2021 to May of 2022. A news release said the woman has already been sentenced. The Green Bay Packers have begun their annual search for the next honoree for the Packers Fan Hall of Fame. Fans can nominate themselves, a friend, a relative with a 500-word essay. The essay should describe the merits of the nominee and should be accompanied by a photo. The nomination deadline is Saturday, November 30th. Visit Packers.com F-H-O-F for more information on how to enter. Voting will take place online and the winner will be announced in February. I'm Lisa Hale, 97.9 WGBW News. For news anytime, log on to WGBW.FM. Bucks basketball tonight. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Milwaukee Bucks host the Chicago Bulls at five serve form. 
Both teams looking for a chance for back-to-back wins. On Monday, the Bucks beat the Rockets. The Bulls got past the struggling 76ers. College basketball, number 15th ranked Marquette with an impressive win in Milwaukee last night over number 6th ranked Purdue. The Golden Eagles 76-58 to over the Boilermakers. Cam Jones had 17 points, 13 rebounds, 10 assists, and only the third triple-double in Marquette history. The last player to do so, Dwayne Wade, back in 2003. Baseball, the Brewers' Pat Murphy named the National League manager of the year who talked about the challenge of a club being from Milwaukee. That's what this whole thing's about. You know, like when you're thinking of a small market team, you're thinking of guys that have all been thrown away, all guys that have been said, no, you're not good enough. And that's that's pleasurable to see, you know, these guys then find an identity and find you know, find a way to be successful. And it's a beautiful thing. Well, what else can you ask for? It's 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 special. They know who they are. They know where they came from. And they're just there to do their job as a teammate. They'll do anything you ask in any role. And, um, yeah, that's what makes it feel really, really special. Makes you want to come to the ballpark every day when you have like that. That's Brewers manager Pat Murphy. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Hugh Grant is not a fan of his character in Notting Hill. It took about 30 years, but the actor with the toothy grin admitted his character had no guts. He didn't like the way his character handled Julia Roberts' character's fame or the paparazzi in the film. Grant says the rumors that he hates all of his films are untrue and that it's just that he hates his own characters, adding that he has self-loathing issues. That's our Hugh. The Glicked Weekend is fast approaching, and Gladiator 2 and Wicked have high hopes for a box office splash. Wicked is expected to be the box office winner, with Universal Studios hoping for a 100 to $110 million opener. Paramount is hoping Gladiator 2 pulls in about $65 million, which would be a healthy start for a film that costs $250 million to make and another $100 million to market. Even those healthy estimates would have this twosome fall short of Barbenheimer's opening weekend, which pulled in $230 million. Houston native Beyonce will perform at halftime of the Baltimore Ravens-Houston, Texas game on Christmas Day. The performance so far is being kept a secret, but it is expected the pop icon will welcome special guests, according to CNN. The game will be broadcast as streaming giant Netflix's first ever NFL broadcast. How excited are fans? Let's just say this could be the single greatest performance interrupted by repeated buffering the world has ever seen. So what do you do when you miss your celebrity ex-wife, Khloe Kardashian? If your former NBA hoopster, Lamar Odom, you buy a sex doll that looks just like her. Yes, it's true. Odom says he purchased the doll to use as a mental wellness tool. I need a new medical plan. On the We're Out of Time podcast, the former Laker said the best part of sex with a doll who looks like a Kardashian is that it's not an actual Kardashian. Have you ever been in a relationship that's been so bad it's made you want to jump to your death? If so, you have something in common with Cher. The iconic performer and former wife of Sonny Bono says that she was so miserable and lonely in her loveless marriage, she considered jumping off a Vegas hotel balcony multiple times. Let me rephrase. On multiple occasions. That's the kind of thing that would be tough to do more than once. The singer says instead of taking her own life, she ultimately decided to leave her marriage much better option, Cher. Speaking of falling, comedian and former Tonight Show host Jay Leno says he fell 60 feet down a rocky hill outside Pittsburgh before one of his shows. According to E! News, Leno suffered bruises on his face, a swollen eye, and a broken wrist. What does a 74-year-old man do after such an accident? Check himself out in a restaurant bathroom and then make his live performance on time. Now that's a pro. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, P. Schwaba. Weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Mostly cloudy with scattered showers this morning and again later this afternoon. Our high today, 44, with wind out of the west at 10 to 20. Tonight, some scattered light rain and snow showers. Our low down to 33. Tomorrow, cloudy, windy with rain and a high of 44. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Currently, it's 42. That's your WGBW Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at WGBW.FM. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 